Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about cognitive dissonance. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about cognitive dissonance. Now, cognitive dissonance is a theory first proposed in 1957 by a psychologist named Leon Festinger, and it describes how an individual reconciles their appraisal of a situation when they're faced with conflicting information about their thoughts or behaviors. People generally want to have a consistent belief system, and when two values disagree with each other, it makes us uncomfortable. A lot of the time, to get rid of that uncomfortable feeling, people will convince themselves that one idea is better or more valuable than the other. This happens a lot out in the real world, especially in sales situations. For instance, if you've ever bought a brand new car, you know that they are really expensive and they lose their value rapidly. If you've recently purchased a new car, you might second guess your decision because you're paying a lot of money, yet the item that you bought is a car, much like any other car which can drive you from point A to point B. A salesperson could convince you that your choice was correct by talking to you about the specific features of that car, the right size for you, the right manufacturer, the right price, if you were told by the salesperson that this car was the safest because of its performance and crash tests, you would be especially receptive to that information in order to reduce cognitive dissonance. You might convince yourself that safety is a concern you value above all others, ensuring that you made the right choice, and thereby eliminating any mental discomfort you might feel from having made such a large purchase. And the weird thing is, it doesn't even have to be a huge decision. We are all faced with tons of decisions every day, even just deciding what you want for lunch. If you're faced with a bunch of options that are really equally good, you'll often justify the choice that you made later in order to reduce the uncomfortable, I had to make a decision feeling. You can also experience cognitive dissonance about other things besides making decisions. For instance, when we learn new information. Say you just found out that your best friend lied to you. Now, you'd always thought that your best friend would tell you the truth. You thought they were a pretty honest person. Learning that they've lied will create a cognitive dissonance. You have to make these two different things make sense. You know your friend is honest, but you also know that your friend lied. That is cognitive dissonance, and trying to resolve it is uncomfortable, and it might make you anxious or stressed. There are lots of different ways to try to resolve cognitive dissonance, and we'll have some of those coming up on a future episode of Psy vs. Psy, and also another episode about why Fessinger first started studying cognitive dissonance. So if you want to know more about cognitive dissonance, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! So, that Festinger story I mentioned, it has cults and aliens. Who said psychology wasn't interesting? <laughs>